Welcome to the first episode of the Splash Panel, where every week we gather industry professionals to discuss all things comic book. We are filming live here from Rock and Joe's Coffee. Woo! There it is. A little delayed. I am your host, Tim Dowd, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Thomas Leverton. Say hi, Tom. Hello, gentlemen and go. ladies. <laughs> All right. Uh, Comic-Con is right around the corner. That's the New York Comic-Con, for those not in with my lingo as I flubbed the line. But, uh, and we are joined this week by our host, Sam Harper, a comic book guru and part-time comic book reviewer. Say hi, Sam. Howdy. And we are joined by Maria, a wizard in all things of the world of Warcraft and Wolverine. Hello. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, our first question for the panel. We have seen a rise in both comic book movies and comic book TV shows, particularly live action shows in the past few years. As properties become adapted, which would you rather see? Hmm. I gotta be honest with you, I gotta say, I would like to see TV shows more because I feel as though something like The Punisher or Electra would be great as a live television show that you could see episodes day in and day out of their, you know, regular stuff. Or even, I mean, we're doing good with Flash and The Arrow. I think live television is the way to go. I would say I would agree to also too because you get more in a series versus a movie where they're just crunching everything together. Whereas in a TV series, they're more able to play their characters out more over time. Even though we'll get them in series, but they're able to more play their characters out more and more. And you get more in than what you would do in a movie scrunched out in big play TVs <laughs> and movies. I don't know if this is correct. Right, but, but don't, don't you think there's an argument to be made that by going as small budget as a TV show inherently has to be due to necessities that you lose out on some of the big moments. You, know, you couldn't really have the battle for New York from the end of the first Avengers film in, in the Daredevil TV show, for instance. But I would say if you're going to go something, like if you're going to do movies, I wouldn't go like local programming, like Channel 4s or anything. Do something like what they did with Game of Thrones, where mm -hmm. they went to like an HBO series where they can do those big action scenes and sequences versus where you do like Channel 4, Channel 7, where they can only play X amount and make it more PG or PG-13, or versus Cinemax, HBO, you can actually really get into the action like if it was a movie. And you're more able to play more of an hour of actual movie versus right. just little 15 seconds, one minute, two minutes. So would you prefer, show. though, that has required a necessity of smaller seasons. Like mm -hmm. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I believe, is like 22, 24 episodes. Right. And Game of Thrones is 10 episodes. Right. Like almost everything HBO produces is a 10-episode season. Right. And Daredevil is not 10, but closer to it. I think it's like, it's like yeah. 12, 13. 12, 13 episodes. Right. So would you prefer the smaller season? Yes. Kind of thing? Okay. Yes, because then you get more in a season. They're yeah. more, more action-packed. Okay. As we play with those adaptations, though, when you get these TV shows and these movies, we've seen everything Marvel has put out so far that's not animated, at least, exists within one shared universe. The Avengers takes place in the same thing as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. takes place in the same thing as Daredevil. DC has gotten a lot more nuanced with it. Supergirl is nebulous as to where it takes place in the continuity. Gotham certainly isn't in the same continuity as The Flash and Green Arrow, and that's not in the same continuity as Man of Steel and... Dawn of Justice. So, do you are you worried that that might start to complicate matters? Yes, because when you don't have so much continuity, it's like you're taking all the comic books mm -hmm. and you're separating them. Whereas in the comic books, they kind of tie in together at one point or another. Mm -hmm. At least for me, coming from a comic book hit, like buff growing up, they all kind of tied in together. When you're separating them all, even though they have great followings like the arrow which I which I think they did a very good job with um, they don't tie in so much so they have like their own little mini worlds yeah. I personally of. really like the approach of a, a non-shared universe okay. that DC is doing because like one of the reasons I've never been able to get right into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is because I know Loki's never going to be on it I'm not a big fan <laughs> of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. though well, I, and, I, and they did great but 
I'm not a big fan of Asian shit for that reason. They only have few characters. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Bring in everybody. Yeah, but if 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 you're not shared like. Like Arrow, for instance. Arrow could have the Joker in it if it wants. It doesn't have to wait for Jared Leto to come in and do an episode of the Joker. And that, that I think, is really cool. Because I know, I never, I'll know going into the Arrow it's going to be the big guns at all times. And going into S.H.I.E.L.D., I may not even get Nick Fury. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> How about you, Sam? Well, it depends. Because i, I got to say... Arrow is doing great. Flash is doing great, and I love that they've made their own. They've, like you said, you can put anyone in there. Like I've, we got Slade Wilson, we've got like uh, Ra's al Ghul, we've got all these characters, and you don't have to wait for them to be on loan to us when the big movies are done with them or needs to squeeze them in. Like we get a Nick Fury what every season or something like that, a one one or two, but. I still live for the little teasers. Like I will, I want to be watching a television, watching one of those shows, and then see in the background, oh, there's something going on at the Daily Planet, and you like, you see some like Superman fly off the screen, or you'll be watching um, the show, and you'll see, oh, uh, what are you doing? This, oh, this is the new stuff from Tech Industries. I mean, Tony Stark Industries. Oh, it's Tony Stark Industries. You know somebody? Ah, he's a friend. It's, it's just little <laughs> things like that that makes it kind of like, yeah, I remember that. That's so cool. Oh, you didn't notice that? It's like you're almost your street cred. You get your Easter egg cred. You just say, hey, I know that. I see the little thing there. I can see where they're almost linking that. It's fun. So are you guys fan, fans of the, the Easter eggs, the end of the movies and stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, very much. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I think we're going to go take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Please join us once again on the Splash Panel. 